Afghans breathe in community and with each other. They cannot breathe alone. And so uh, this is so important. Um, and um, I'm really glad that I was able to do that. I, and it was not easy, but I had to say no to many, many projects and uh, just prioritize uh, family um, because that was a big need. Um, it was not easy because after each call, I, it wasn't just, it was like a one hour call but it would the the impact would last for another couple of hours before I could like focus back to my work because to see them in a situation that you cannot do much uh, about uh, was uh, not very easy. So um, now in in the U.S. in Canada in other places uh, my. Uh, one thing I would like to share with people is just like go have tea with people, uh, with uh, with Afghans, uh, with your Afghan friends. And if they bring you food, they will bring you a lot of food. Again, it's because of our culture. In our culture, guests are not just invited. Anybody can visit. People don't even ask your name. You are, they are actually told not to ask the name because it's a conf it's a been in conflict for so many years. You don't want to know if someone is on the other side. And then that would impact your hospitality. You just don't want anything to impact your hospitality. But also, if there's one person coming to your home, you prepare food for 10 people. Because yes. that person is allowed to invite someone else who's also allowed to invite someone else who's also allowed to invite someone else. So you never know how many people will end up in your home. So you always prepare a lot of food. And, um, and people are very happy if you eat that food. And so uh, don't worry, even if they if you feel like, well, they economically cannot afford this much food, just eat it because they believe that it will keep coming. Yes. Don't go on an empty or go on an empty stomach. Yes, for sure. And it is a party. I have been the recipient of that. You know, we helped a lot of Afghan refugees through Love Does with basic needs and then also resettling, you know, many of the families. And it wasn't just a, a program or a project for us. They really became our friends. And then we've shared lots of moments. We went to Disneyland last year. I remember we were at the Pirates of the Caribbean and one of the guys was like, oh, this seems like a little bit like home. And I was like, oh, gosh, that was maybe not a, a good ride for us to go on. But we, you know, that for several of the teenagers, that was the first time they were on roller coasters. And it's really been a joy to, to share the pumpkin patch or the zoo, the San Diego Zoo, some of these outings and just uh, sharing time because they matter. And my schedule seems like it's a little crazy at the time, so I don't get to, to be uh, with them as much as I would like. But it has really been one of the biggest gifts of the last couple of years in making friends with some of the refugees that have come. What else, you know, because there's Ukrainian refugees, uh, obviously Afghan refugees, what is it like for them uh, as they're in a new country and a new place? What are some of the things and some of the challenges that they're facing? I think that many things are very new. Um, uh, particularly, I can speak about Afghans, um, that uh, the way life is done here and the way it's done in Afghanistan in many respects is just very different. One of those biggest things is um, uh, being in community and, um, and being with extended family members. People have tried to stay together. It hasn't worked all the time, but um, for the most part, uh, in, in many parts of Afghanistan, that still is the case. Uh, and so they can feel a little lonely um, um, here when they arrive because people have busy schedules. And it's not very easy to uh, see each other uh, as often as they would uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, and so um, that is uh, loneliness is probably one of the biggest challenges. And, and many people like yourselves are doing really a lot of um, great work um, trying to reach out to these people. And that means a lot uh, to them. Um, uh, and then there are other practical life things, uh, such as getting into the job market uh, in these countries, in the United States, for example. It's not easy and uh, it just works very differently. One of the things is that it's so focused and 
and you have to know exactly, for example, what your skills are and where you fit. And you have to be able to find that. In Afghanistan, it's much broader. And so you can pick a field, for example, and find a place for yourself and you would be very flexible. And here the competition is uh, stronger um, in some senses uh, because you have- One of the ways that I think we've jumped in, because we've seen that as well, is um, is with women in particular too, uh, having an opportunity to drive. And so we've helped Mm. several of the women to get driver's license because that equals freedom and then the ability to get out and do different things. In fact, and that's the same for the men as well. Many of the Afghan refugees that we get to work with have become Uber drivers or Amazon delivery drivers as they are then going back to school on the side, but just give some freedom to that. And in fact, even our single mom program, you know, within Love Does, people who have cars or want to give to that uh, particular area is really helpful for us because we are just funneling that to Ukrainian refugees, Afghan refugees, single moms. It really is a game changer with regard to getting into the job market and what that looks like. That being said, in terms of the culture being so different, it really is very different for women um, mm-hmm. living here and getting used to that. But then also those that are still left in Afghanistan. And I know that you and Sophia have worked hard to find creative ways to still give Afghan women a voice that are in Afghanistan. Can you speak a little bit to what it looks like to be, you know, some of the challenges that women face there and kind of what can be done about it? Yeah, I mean, um, I would probably never understand as a man. Um, and so they would be um, best place to talk about it, women themselves. But I do communicate um, and um, in, in a lot of our programs, of course, women are an integral part. And, um, and we try to create equal opportunities for both. Um, and, and they describe the situation uh, in ways that are um, really tragic. Uh, for example, just a couple of days ago, I think it was uh, a young woman wrote an article um, that uh, she described um, uh, being a woman as like a, just a moving body, but dead inside in Afghanistan. Mm. Uh, because uh, what has happened, especially after the change, is that being a woman has turned into a duty you are told, you are actually given a set of don'ts. These are the things you cannot do. And uh, that's pretty much like everything. And uh, that has uh, taken that freedom that you're talking about uh, totally away um, from them. And um, and so it, it has become really difficult. But at the same time, um, I think that the hope for the situation of women in Afghanistan mm-hmm. also comes from themselves and there are lots of courageous women that are doing a lot of important work uh, both inside Afghanistan and globally there are women at the united nations Uh, the united nations over the past couple of years for example has given every platform to afghan women Uh, Mm -hmm. there has not been probably a single man speaking at the united nations over the past couple of years and i totally support that it's Uh been uh, almost similar with the european union and uh, some of the other uh, international um, organizations. Uh, And again, I support that. I think that should continue. And these women who are based outside of Afghanistan are fiercely um, advocating for their rights. Um, And I think that it is not an exaggeration what they call it. They describe the situation in the country as a gender apartheid. And they're Mm -hmm. pushing the United Nations to recognize that and then do something about it because Right now, what they're try- what it, the international community, you can ask them on a moral ground. We have to create legal grounds as well so that they hold themselves accountable. They are obliged to do something. There are, of course, international laws and regulations and United Nations resolutions and so forth that they have to work on. But these women are pressing to make that stronger. On the inside, um, it's the same. Many of them uh, are not mm, so much present online, but on the ground, they are actually doing a lot of work and we are tracking and we are in communication with many of um, these movements inside the country. 
and that's where I actually draw my hope for the situation of women. That's really country. encouraging, Araf. And I also, you know, not too long ago, you invited me on a Zoom with our school. I had to stay up late to be able to talk to them. I think we were doing a food drop. It was pretty cool. And I was able to talk to some of our female students that were there. And it was really enlightening. It struck me, first of all, just how hard they're working. We're able to still educate girls up to sixth grade per the Taliban's rules. We have to separate them. But as I was having a conversation, I was talking about, you know, what subjects they like and don't like. They are very uh, studious and they still dream. They talked about wanting to still become a doctor and a teacher. Mm -hmm. And one, it reminded me of the gift of education, that you don't take that for granted because not everybody gets that gift. And they recognize that and want to really take advantage of every opportunity afforded to them. And should there be more opportunities in the future, then they'll be ready to move forward in that and understand the value of what an education means. And that's been really... Um, it's been really encouraging to me that we get to provide that still for them and that oasis. And I, we were also talking recently about just the school still being up and running and that that was, of all the stuff that you're doing, uh, that that was a pretty meaningful thing to you.